so why do they call you the homeless millionaire? Well, uh, I'm a shot caller. I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean like liquid cash because they say you have so much money and you're choosing to be out here. You could be in a million dollar house somewhere if you feel like it. Is that true? You know this guy named Mango? He's more like the president, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're a big baller. I just, what, do I just look up? Just tweet. That's what my tweet is, is drawing things like that. To me, money is nothing, you know? It's a life game down here in the road, baby. I'm telling you. What if I told you there's a homeless millionaire voluntarily living on Skid Row? This story started out a few months ago when I first started filming videos. A friend of mine, Brandon, sent me over a DM that piqued my interest. There's an apparent millionaire that chooses to live on Skid Row. He goes by Mango. The first thing I thought was he'd be some raspy voice drug dealer, probably getting high on his own supply, basking in the lawlessness and entropy of the homeless haven, Skid Row. I found myself determined to meet Mango and uncover his story. Each visit to Skid Row in search of him felt like chasing a phantom. While some knew of the legend, none could provide clues on his whereabouts nor how to find him. Eventually, I succumbed. I accepted the possibility that Mango might just be an urban myth, a story without an end, forever out of my reach. We'll never meet. Then, unexpectedly, during a casual Tuesday afternoon walk through Skid Row with Christmas List, we spotted a trash can ablaze in the distance with raging fires. Without hesitation, we hurried over. However, it definitely wasn't what we expected. There was a man nonchalantly barbecuing out of an improvised grill made from a shopping cart and trash can. This makeshift blazing contraption was fueled by crack pipes, random trash, and cardboard, which, not gonna lie, is pretty resourceful. I don't know how the firefighters in the area weren't sent over immediately since, well, it was 4 o'clock in the afternoon and there was a trash can on fire in the middle of the street, but I forgot. This is Skid Row. We spoke with this charming man, and that's when he revealed his identity to Chris. You can see that moment, many other captivating stories, and more on Chris Bustless video. Link is in the description below. After chatting for a bit, you can tell he's sort of different than your average homeless person. How many homeless people do you know with a custom Dolce & Gabbana jacket, Oakley shades, and better grooming than me? Albeit, that's not really a high bar. Mango's influence on Skid Row is akin to that of an actual mayor, marked by its generous food distributions, concern, and even spontaneous barbecue cookouts. He claims the mission supplies the food directly to him, which he and his followers distribute among the community. He has crates of essentials, food, drinks, and even gives out so much, yet remains an enigma, shrouded in mystery. These mysteries become apparent very quickly, as he can be quite the jokester, and he even dances around direct questions when you expect some direct answers, similar to any politician. Maybe this guy actually is the mayor. In this captivating interview, we venture deep into the mysteries surrounding Mango, shedding light on the complexities of his domain, such as drug use and safety, his influence as the self-appointed mayor, his philosophies, and the burning question everyone wants the answer to. Is he really a millionaire? Join us on our journey with one of Skid Row's most notable figures. But before we dive into that, I want to take a moment to express my gratitude. You just reached 500 subscribers. Thank you all for your incredible support. I'm excited to continue sharing my adventures from around the globe with you. Now, without further ado, this is the illustrious Mango. How did you get elected as mayor here? Uh, well, I got uh, selected by just uh, helping out the people. You know, people just say that I'm like the mayor because I listen to their problems and I try to come up with a quick, fast solution with it, you know. Uh, homeless is a problem here, but... You know, down deep, as you will see in this, um, in this broadcast, that, you know, we have much more uh, problems to deal with besides being homeless. I call it houses um, because their home is where you lay your heart is. Their home is where your heart is. And, uh, you know, uh, listening to them, getting listen to their uh, problems, having solutions and things like that to the best of my ability. And, and you know, that's it. I'm just giving them a, a helping hand, you know. Yeah, I saw you earlier um, cooking like barbecue and meat for everyone. And that's how we first came across you. Right. Uh, what else? What else are you doing here in the community? Uh, just uh, you know, just giving them a helping hand, showing them the love. You know, show them that they're loved. You know, uh, that they're uh, they're not missed. You know, let them know that you know. I go out and I uh, identify every person out here. I, I say hello to every single person that I run across. Let them know, hey, I identify you. You know, just saying hello because sometimes a hello could make somebody's day. You know. When they asked me, hey, Mango, how are you? I said, if I had a tail, I'd be wagging it, you know? <laughs> so with, with that note, I just want everybody to be smiling like that, you know, wag their tails. So um, that's that's um, what I can do around uh, here with the people. Do you have any enemies here? Well, everybody have enemies. Uh, I haven't met my enemies. Um, you know, my enemies could be the ones that come and, and, they, and they, uh, they steal from me, they take from me. Watch this. Hey, man, what's up? Let me ask you a question, you don't mind? You don't mind being filmed here with, with, 
We're, we're filming. We're talking with this guy here. We're trying to find this guy named Mango. Come in for a minute. Oh, Mango. Mango, he in my for real, man. Yeah, so, so listen, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, we're, we're trying to find this guy named Mango. So tell me, you know this guy named Mango? I know him. You know, tell me about this. Excuse me. Tell me a little bit about this guy named Mango. He got style like a mug, though. Like, he got original style. He got real smooth, you know, real smooth talker. He always disappearing, but he be right there in front of you. You don't even know it. Wow, wow. So does Mango, does he help out and stuff like that? Because we hearing about this guy named Mango, like the mayor or something like that down Skid Row. Does he, he help out? He's not the mayor. He's more, like, he more like the president, though. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's the president, oh, like man. He's though, you know. Oh, right on, right on, yes, right on, right on. Well, listen, um, Mango left some food here. So oh. uh, we just ran a couple of Oh, that's perfect time. Yeah, so uh, grab your few things, man. And uh, when we find this guy in Mango, we'll let you know. But if you see Mango, let us know, man, okay? Uh, Question of the day is, where's Mango? Where's Mango? That's what we look for. Where's Mango? No more, where's Waldo? <laughs> no more Waldo. Who the hell is Waldo? Waldo. He doesn't live here. Carmen Stanley, who? <laughs> yeah, I was saying, right here. So, um, yeah, so um, that's that's the thing that we, uh, that's the thing I do, man. And and let me tell you something. What, what really hits me the most is the people that acknowledge me. Hey, Mango, I'll cross the street, and I look and I go, damn, he said hello to me. Like, like you know, it, it, it's a it's a good name, a good name carry weight, man, you know? And I'm so grateful that uh, that I have a good name. That's, you know, like I said, people, people don't like me. You know, people don't like me because I'm a Mango. But, um, however, I'm here for the people who don't like me and for the people who do like me. So why do they call you the homeless millionaire? Well, uh, Maybe somebody went and checked my bank account. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, there's somebody out here working for Chase Bank. You know how J.P. Morgan out of Chase Bank. People are talking um, too much. Somebody's talking too much. Um, I would say maybe because when they want something, go to Mango. He'll have it. You know, uh, he'll it's, have it, uh, or he's he has a a way of getting it, uh, obtaining it. You know. So. Is this only like food, or what kind of other things can you get? Um, I can get more than basically. Anything you you choose, if it's out here, I can retrieve it. You know, um, so I can come to you for like a phone or electronics. Yeah, you know? if you want a phone, I get your phone. Uh, what about housing? I get housing. I've been housing people. I was down in MacArthur Park helping house the people down there in MacArthur Park. I help house the people here. That's one of the things that we may be able to go and visit later on is some of these people's houses. How they went from the street to they, they, they went from the street right to these houses and unfortunately they are placing their tents in these houses. I mean, into like these apartments and things like that. So there's a tent inside of the actual apartment? In, in, yep, inside the apartment. There's tents inside the Grand Hotel that they place their body in the Grand Hotel. Um, that's one thing, you know. Uh, and so these people need to have the, what's called the butterfly effect, you know. What do you mean by that? The butterfly effect is going from first your little caterpillar, you know, you, you're scooting up and down, you know, all in the dirt, because you're at the bottom of it. You, yeah. You, you know, you're at the bottom, and then you, and then at that particular time, you know, the father says, go in. You go in, you start spinning your web, you know, using the finest silk as well. You spin yourself a little web because it's called a cocoon. And then once you come out of that cocoon, you spread your wings like this, and you go, ah, and you become a whole nother different creature. You know, what happened to the caterpillar? Where did he go? Where did that caterpillar disappear to? They say he becomes the butterfly. I say that he just disappeared and, and, and poof. That shows the wonders of the earth. That shows the wonders of our creator, you know, who can create something like that. Now, if man can do something like that, take a worm and turn him into a, bu a butterfly and something like that, AI, I want to see you do that. Um, AI? Yeah, AI. Do you believe in AI? Uh, I use it on a daily basis. Okay. It might be the way I get all my scripts made for the videos, but no, I'm kidding. Okay, they're, they're saying that the uh, AI, I'm mean, going to change the subject. Is the AI is going to take over the world. It is. It is? Yeah. Wow, how is how's that possible? You know the type of stuff you can do with AI? Sure. If, if I needed to, I could get some stock footage made of this entire area without even stepping foot here. Now watch this. It took someone to input into AI. So AI can't put nothing out unless you put something in. So, so AI is just a big old data bank that, you know, I mean, you know, it's like a calculator. You can hit any of the numbers and things like that. So, does AI know? Man is not gonna let AI take over the world. That, that, that's just my point of view of it. And God, I mean, 
my God, who wants to lose call God, my father. I don't think it was mentioned that the AI was going to come and take over the world. I, they called me a millionaire because uh, I guess I have wealth. And my wealth is love. Love conquers all. Love, love outweighs it all, baby. I mean like liquid cash, because they say you have so much money and you're choosing to be out here. You could be in a million dollar house somewhere if you feel like it. Is that true? Well, um, I want to I want to say that, you know, someone's talking too much out here. Um, I believe that, uh, sure, I'm out here by choice. Um, yes, I can go get me a million dollar home if I want, if I choose to. However, my home is out here. Th these are my homes. You know, the every tent that we go and go visit or things like that. These streets, this is my home, you know. Going into a million dollar place, I want to bring the people with me, yeah. you know, because these, this is my family. You know, I walk around here and I do have love for each and every person that's out here. I don't know each and every person out here, but they know me. And uh, I'm looking to purchase uh, the gra graffiti towers. I don't know if you heard about that. Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, I'm we're, so, you're, you're trying to buy that. that that's yeah, expensive. Yeah, yeah, it's expensive. However, you know, to me, money is nothing, you know. If everyone who's watching this video, if they were to send one dollar, say one dollar a week or one dollar a month, just send in one dollar now. Tell ten of your friends and have ten of your friends to ten of their friends, and then we can all obtain that building. You know, that's a two billion dollar building. I know there's more than two billion people, two billion people in the earth, right? Yeah, so, but some some people don't really even have a dollar to spare. Well, they can give. Well, a dollar. You can walk around in a month, and you will find a dollar on the ground within a month's time. I mean, I mean, in like in places like Africa or, or India. Okay, well, Africa and India, they have some type of currency, and if they, and if they watch this, and if they don't have, they have the time. They have the time to show their love. You know, they can come and they can come here and they can work at this building and stay there for free. This will be the only timeshare in the world. And you have a nice time show downtown Los Angeles, California for a dollar. And how would you afford to pay for that? Just from donations? It won't be me just paying for it. We will all be paying for it. That means we will all have a voice into it. And uh, I mean, I have my dollar to put in it. And that's all I need. Once I put my dollar in, I know that I'm a part of that building. Yeah. I, you know, so uh, if, if not, I can go there and work and I'll have my room still. Yeah. You know, so uh, it's going to be creating jobs. A place to stay and creating jobs, and you never know who you can meet working there, you know? Speaking of jobs, what was your previous job before um, this part of your life? Well, I was a mobile detailing ex a specialist. I had my own mobile detailing service in Florida. All my, all my business have been spiritual business because God's my, my boss. I had to come into your office and tell you, give me the keys to your $247,000 Bentley outside. Okay, wait right here, and you're thinking, and you're, think, you're thinking like, wait a minute, who's this guy I just gave my key to? I just gave my keys, I gave my, my some guy I just, just met came in here and I gave him the keys to my Bentley. I had a mobile detailing service and um, we go to your office and things like that. We did doctor's offices, did golf courses, you know, um, I met the president. I mean, I've done some. Which president, days. Trump? No, I met um, Obama. Was it Obama? Yeah, Obama. Oh, that's he, really nice. He played golf there. I can't disclose the, the uh, golf in his Calusa Pines. Calusa Pines, oh man, it's a beautiful course. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, so I had to have all my business as a spiritual business because I wake up in the morning, he leads me and takes me to the place that needs to be, uh, these cars need to be cleaned, you know? And um, so that's what I did. I had a detailing business for 28 years, had uh, employees, I took, my, took care of my employees and, uh, you know, lived happy, made, I mean, lived good, lived good, and still living good to this day. So my job now today is... Still go out here cleaning, cleaning lives up, you know, cleaning the souls, cleaning the spirits, cleaning the hearts. That's what I do now. How'd you end up here? In my travels, I won a lawsuit. Uh, I won a lawsuit in Florida, and uh, I decided to. I decided to go could you, up. Could you give me my skateboard? Thank you. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is. Rock. Sorry. Hold on, one more moment, ma'am. Lady tried to take my skateboard. That's on me for being so careless. Here. Well, no, it's not being careless. I seen it when she picked it up. This is being, this is this is skate road. Things like that happen, you know. Things like that happen. So you do have to watch your belongings here. Um, to me, I think she needs attention because she stood over there first, and she seen the cameras and she's like, damn, who's that on the camera and all that stuff. So, <laughs> who's know? that handsome man? Yeah, yeah. Who's that man? And I was like, that's my friend there, you know. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, people like that, they, they want attention. People like that need attention. It's the love that they lack. 
you know, um, I, I, I would like to do an investigation or study on how come these people are the way they are. Because some people, are, when they first moved here, they're not the same. So I get on to, I get on to case managers. I get on what type of medication are you giving these people? Yeah. Because these people, some of the people that was out here when I first came here are not the same. Now they're walking in the rows, butt naked and all this stuff. And yeah. I'm, I'm like, what the? I know. You know, maybe they have these things where crystal counteract with the drugs they're using. Mm -hmm. You know, but however, man. Uh, do you ever fear for your safety out here? Because uh, you know, there's thievery. Well, there's people that steal. There's people that hurt others. There's drug users. You know, people don't necessarily act themselves. You seem like you're fairly sober. I mean, obviously you drank, but <laughs> but like you, you're red not. Wine, you, you're sober. We're gonna see red wine, red wine. You know when. It was like this, coming to biblical days when it said, and Jesus turned water into wine. Well, he turned water into wine, so back in the biblical, so it's the same thing. So, well, well, I mean by sober, what I mean by sober is like you're not doing fentanyl, I'm assuming. Like you're not smoking fent or no, crystal or, no, do you? No, um, let me just share this with you. A couple of years ago when fentanyl first came out, working with the fire department, it was like, what in the hell is going on here? And then we've seen God in the action. <laughs> Maybe able to see, and I, and I always wanted to film a dead guy. I always wanted to interview a dead guy coming back from the dead. And then I say, you know, oh wait, I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever drove a semi-truck? I haven't seen your truck. You want to go see it later? No, a semi-truck. Oh, a semi-truck. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Have you driven one before? No, me personally, no. So if I was to ask you, how was it driving a semi-truck? Would you be able to tell me? I would be able to just guess. I'd probably give you a... Right, right. So how can you talk about something unless you experience it? Mm -hmm. So I'm asking everybody, hey, did you come back from the dead? Did you see any white light? Did you see this and that and that, blah, 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 blah. Until I had to experience it for myself. Now, it was an accident that I in inhaled some fentanyl, and I was dead for 17 minutes. The fire department had to come down there and rescue me. 20 minutes on the scale, that's that's it. They work on you, work on you, work on you. They spent more time on me, not more time on me. They spent a lot of time on me, you know, to bring me back. And to tell you the truth, my friend, I was at peace. When they said, rest in peace, it means rest in peace. It was a calm place. I didn't see no lights, nothing like that. I was just, and then, I, and then almost at the end, I could hear voices. And when you wake up from being from an overdose of fentanyl, the first thing they do, they go, huh, huh. What, what, what's going on? What, 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 what's, going, what's going on? Because they, they're, they're brought back here. Yeah. You know. Um, it's a massive, you know, jump in time. You know, yes. know, when you pass out, stuff like that. Right. Um, death. <laughs> Let's do it out here in Skate Row as guinea pigs, you know. Um. When the COVID came out, we had the least amount of COVID cases here in Skid Row. Our immune system is so high up because look, look around, look how we're living. Yeah. You know, we're living in these conditions to where this is ground zero, you know. So the body is going to automatically build these antibodies against these various things. They're laying on the ground, right here on the, on the sidewalk, rats and Piss and, and shit, shit and, and blood, all, and, yeah, and all that stuff is out there. And you're laying your cheek right there on the ground. You're inhaling these things, you know, constantly. Yes. So your body is, the body here is a machine here down here in Skate Row. So, um, you know, so 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 by them bringing fentanyl out here, I've lost a lot of good friends and fit with on fentanyl. You know, um, thank God I'm still here, um, and I thank God that I'm still here from the overdose that I've experienced. You know. Um, I don't recommend that drug or any drug to anyone out there, you know. Um, you know, so if, if you're watching this and you do fentanyl, hey, hats off to you, you know. Um, just if, if, if you overdose, excuse me, and you have no Narcan there, get on the phone, call 911, and you'll see that Station 9, Los Angeles, California, will be there. Or... Any station around wherever you're at, you know, um, just, uh, just God be with you, you know. So, so how do how are you helping people with fentanyl directly? Are you trying to tell them is this more of a prevention thing, uh, or is it more like uh, you just you can't really judge them? 
you let them do what they do and you just try your best right, to help. Right, you, you can't judge them. You know, I can't judge anyone. And a rabbit knows he's a rabbit, <laughs> you know. So uh, he gets up every morning, he, he just, I'm a rabbit, he goes hopping around. Well, Mango, well, what, are you, what are you getting at? Okay, well, since you asked, I'm going to tell you. They know, the, they know the symptoms of fentanyl. Yeah. They know the risk of fentanyl. I'm not going to go and slap you in your wrist or nothing like that because when you force something on people, they get very rebellious of it. They, well, I don't do what I want to do, you know. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm here for the rescue. If I catch you overdosing, if I see you're overdosing and things like that, hey, I'll do my best to bring you back alive, bring you back, you know. But, you know, from that point on, like every single day, you're in God's hands, my God's hands. That's how I look at things, you know. Um, and and that uh, you're gonna go one day. Yeah. You know, so uh, I I just if they, I I help them by just going and encouraging them, and saying hello to them, and then hey man, it's a beautiful day, and how you doing today, and things like that. If they want to talk about their addiction, you know that I'm here to listen to them. I'm here to talk with them. Um, but as far as me going and telling, man, you shouldn't be doing that shit. You know, it's not. You, you already know all the calls that people. Yeah, that, yeah. You know? So I, I don't throw nothing down their throat. And then that's, that's my address with that. You know. How do you think uh, the mayor's doing? I mean, literally right now, I see someone walking around with uh, a pipe. Yeah, not a pipe. I'm sorry, like needles. And then I see guys walking around here. They have their little packs with the plastic bag, and they have needles in there, hygiene mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, how do you feel about just Mayor Bass's? Uh, policies and rules in general here and do you think it's improving skid row or making things worse well mm, i think that it's the same you know i really think it's the same you know uh everything everything there's always there's always a motive behind something you know well why are the drugs around here why why there's not more strict police policies on walking around with a pipe. Why not pay for maybe because we arrest people too much and then they will say, Oh, you arrested that homeless man out there because he had a pipe in his hand you know, and then okay. At least for a day or two, we could take that homeless man who's on who has an addiction, we can put him into the mental ward here in the jail system. We can work with him. We can get him off it. We can try now we can we can talk with him on on fentanyl, on the drugs like that and see if he gets in. If yeah. not, if not, we continue on doing it again until we, okay, you don't want to listen to us? We're going to put you in a long-term treatment center. That means we're going to give you a year and a half in jail. Hey, to say it like that, but we're going to have you, now that you're in jail, we're going to have you in a place where you can get educated on these things so you can be able to come out and tell someone about it. Not just throw you in jail and be like, oh, you're in jail for that reason, for the reason of that like that. Um, so you think jailing is... Jailing some of these addicts is a better solution than just throwing them into hotels and letting them be. Well, I would say that um, the the Grand is a nice hotel. Yeah, I bet it's really nice. Okay, let's say that we send you to the Grand. You can't come off the property unless you're with someone, you know, for a year and a half. You got your freedom, you got to eat, you know, you're not locked up, you got to go to classes and things like that. You're not locked up, so you feel somewhat freedom. You you feel somewhat free, you know. A man is not free unless he's free indeed. So people are still in the bondage on different little things and different things, you know? So I would say, if you sentence them to a nice place like the Grand or something like that, not behind bars, you know, hey, you wake up, you know, town, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know that, that's, it makes a person rebel against, you know. And then, um, now, with that, you know, you can get your freedom, you can do this, now it's time to go to class, you start feeling better about yourself. How are you gonna get the drugs in? Well, you get the drugs in in prison also. I've never been to prison, um, but I hear that there's drugs on the prison yard and things like that. So I'm thinking that we can work with you now on a one-on-one basis, you know, not just throwing people in jail and tell them, hey, you know, go to jail and this and that and that and that. I don't do jail. I can't do it in the jail. In the meantime, we don't get along, you know? Yeah, I figure. So uh, that would be my solution with that. Saying that the people here, yes, all the people that's on drugs, I will say, we'll take them. We're gonna take you to, we're gonna take you to jail, fingerprint you, put you on the van, Take you to some place and drop you off. And you can be like, damn, what? Should this still be in L.A. or, or should this be elsewhere? Well, um, if, if, if there's property here in L.A. or if it's someone else, girls, it could be right downtown. You know, it could be right downtown. You got a big tall gate, but you're free. Say you got a whole neighborhood. Huh. You know, we're going to send you to this neighborhood. And in this neighborhood, everybody got a chance. And then, like, you know, you and 
and, you know, and things like that. What would you do because it's too small? I mean, L.A. has the largest homeless population in all the United States. 66,000, now we're at 72,000. Yeah, which is just unfathomable just to think about. And if a, a large majority of these people, maybe not a large majority, but a, a, major, a decent amount of people here are taking drugs, how are we going to fit to all these people in just one place? You think they should be moved out somewhere else, like Bakersfield or something? Or? Well, yeah, yeah. That'd be sweet. I mean, if, if they all can't fit into one one place, you know, uh, I believe we can get, you know, I mean, we could, we could find... There's a lot of abandoned buildings here. Sure are. There, there's a lot of uh, vacant properties around here, you know. So, and then we just then we need to outsource it, you know. Outsourcing Bakerfield, um, Lancaster, you know, different places like that. And we're working on them on one on one and one. But I guarantee you, that solution there will bring down the population of all the people out here using drugs. Because most people, I help. If, if they get a start on some things, some people just can't get that start. Some people don't have the opportunity. They feel like they don't have the opportunity, you know. They're like, damn, man, if I had an opportunity. Well, I got my opportunity by <clears throat> jumping out there. Yeah. You know. Um, so you, you believe this is just a matter of rehab, rehab and re-education opposed to, you know, just punishment? Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, you're deeply religious. Um, super, super I'm, religious. I'm a spiritual person. You're more, would you say you're faithful or are you like Christian? Um, By faithful, I mean like you know, you know, there's a God, there's Jesus, but you're not necessarily a part of a, a dedicated faith like Christianity or Catholicism no, or not, Islam. Not, no, no, not no Baptist. Can, uh, no, I am a spiritual being. You know, I'm a spiritual being. I have faith, you know, and I ask people this. Let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. Can you walk on water? <laughs> no. Good answer. Because there's one, there's no wrong answer in life. However, there's a time and a season for everything. There's a time to cry. There's a time. Hey, hey, Miss Lady. So, like, what are you doing now to get people more faithful here? Uh, or, like, what are your efforts for encouraging religion in Skid Row? To let them know. To let them know that, you know, believe in something, yes. Oh, like we like were saying, um, there's a time and season for everything. See, there's a time when it freezes, when it gets really cold. They drive across Lake Michigan. Mm -hmm. Lake Michigan, that is water, right? And watch this. There is this thing, it's this sport called hockey. Yeah. What are they skating on? Ice and water. What, and, and what is ice? Water, yeah. Water. So, there's a time and a season for everything. That means when the summertime in July, uh, I mean, you know... I, well, do you have faith that you can walk on it? Yes, I do. But God didn't tell me to walk on it right now because it's June. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In January, God says, come. I'm, I'm coming. You know, I'm taking off. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, you know, so that's how I look at things. So people can say, well, you know, uh, you need faith for this and then and don't, don't, don't put it in the box. Just have faith. You got faith in a light. Every time you hit that light switch, click. You have faith that a light is going to come on. What happens when it don't come on? Oh, damn, man. Honey, we need another bulb in the bathroom. You know what I mean? So uh, we all have faith. We have faith on the ceiling that some people are watching this. The ceiling that's above your head, we have a faith that it's not going to come falling down. Yeah. So you think you think faith is what these people need uh, to like turn their lives around and you know get off the drugs, try and be a little bit more sober? Yes. You know, um, just believe. Like you know when they said when, when God said. When Jesus came by and he healed the people, and he says, get up, you can walk. The man just got up and walked. He wasn't like, well, I don't know, man, because my, my leg really been hurting, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and Jesus, he, I, I don't know, man. I know you, you You had Tommy over there. You gave Tommy eyesight, and, you know, I was good, Jesus, but me getting up and walk. But having the faith and believing in that faith, you know, so just, just by believing in something, I believe that what I encourage the people, try to be a good example, is, hey, if I have it, I'm out here with you. I don't have no money, I have no job, you know. My name is just Mango. So y'all give to every mangoes, you know. It's like the love I have for the people, they see the love shining on me, you know. And so let your light shine before men, that they can see the good works of your heaven, that they can see that God has been blessing you. So let your light shine, Mango, shine, baby. Shine, you know. Um, and let people see that it's not you, because I didn't go out and get all this stuff. This stuff was blessed to me, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, a, it's, it's the faith that I believe that 
if these people can just have a little faith and believe that, you know, I can, I could, if they don't want to do nothing, if you don't want to do nothing, you're not going to do it. Yeah. You know, that's plain and simple. So, uh, that's my model with that. I come out here, I'm not a Bible thumper, I'm not here to go, and God said this, none of that stuff. We just, I just go out and just. For a big example. You're casual with it. You know, you just put it in there. Like, hey, you know, maybe you, you, you should come with me to church on Sunday. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, and just and just, uh, just believing in something, you know. That's all that. It's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. Look at Miss Sonia. Hi, Miss Sonia. How you doing? Sonia comes out of my house. Can I get a couple of them? You sure can, Sonia. And how you doing today? Is it, like, watch your step when you walk around the, the tripod, man. See that big old tripod right yeah. next to you? Wow, it's taller than her. Oh, is it yours? It's mine. It's his. And guess what? Now it's yours. <laughs> hey, 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 chill, chill, man. <laughs> so, you got too much influence, man. So, yeah. so. Kayla, okay, where are you going? Dude, they have stuff from Erewhon here. Oh, yeah, you know about Erewhon? Yeah. Erewhon is a, Listen, folks, I'm going to tell you something. Folks, who all watching this is going, Erewhon, ooh. <laughs> Folks, let me tell you something. We eat fifteen dollars and fifty cent sandwiches down here in Skid Row. They're eating better than me and you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you guys, you guys, you work hard. You bust your ass and go home. And you say, "Honey, let's have some dinner." What do you want to have? Let's go to E One. And then you go to E One. You spend what? Two sandwiches. That's thirty dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, you know, so so it's like, damn. And if I say, "Hey, man, I'm hungry. What you want to eat?" E One. All right, I just go in my box. <laughs> Give me one sandwich. Yeah, like that, 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 that. Ow! What's it? What's a red shot today, baby? Isn't life great down here in the road, baby? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, man. So that's what I love about being down here. You know, uh, you wouldn't trade this for a regular life with like a you know a house and stuff like that. Well, no, because see, a house you're gonna have stress. You're gonna gotta go pay your light bill. You know, and light bill they gonna want their, you know, they they're gonna want their money. So you know, you gotta. You're going to get up in the morning time, you're late for work, oh, you're going to be stressing out, oh, I'm late for work, you know, and, and, and you get to work and you get fired, and you're like, oh, fuck, and you're all mad and stuff like that, and you're going to say, wait a minute, I know where I can go. I can go down there to the road. I can go and see Mango down at the road. And you come down here, folks, we're not suggesting this now, but you come down here to the road, you meet Mango, and you just hang out and have a good time. You take care of your supply, you know, your EE1, just like everybody else. You can sit down. I worked hard, and I had to work a whole hour. This is for the doctors. I had to work a whole one hour just to eat one night dinner for me and my wife. When man go down there eating it. Look. Man got stacks of them, baby. I got a hundred thousand, I got a couple thousand dollars worth of eating one sandwiches I have eaten out here today. You see that? Bam, 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 bam. Look at that, man. We're gonna shout out to E1. We're gonna thank E1 for first uh, donating all these food here for us. You know, uh, you know, we we showing the love. Excuse me, sir. Eric, you got a camera. See the camera right there? Sir? No, no, no. It's, it's, what are you holding? No, no. Show me, show me. Just show me. I'm not, I'm not criticizing you or anything. I just want to see it. These are oh, the yeah. pipes. Yeah, those are those are. Man, these are yeah. pipes. Those are I don't. Oh, go ahead. Go get your food. I don't yeah, worry. Yeah, grab, grab, grab right there, my friend. Those are those are some of the the the, the perks that we have here down in Skid Row. And, it's uh, free pipes and free needles. Yeah, free pipes and free needles. Well, free now, drugs. Now, now this is what when I first got here, I'm like, why in the hell are they giving out needles? And, and they say, oh, because uh, we don't want to keep it safe and nobody get. And I think it's bullshit. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's bullshit. Hey, bro, it's a, it's a little bit. Oh no, sir. He's asking uh, about the wine. Yeah. I, I I think it's bullshit because that's what you call enabling people. Yeah. You know, uh, how are we gonna help this man get off drugs if we keep giving him a pipe? Mom, but put a dope in it too. Yeah. You know, they got the one, now they have these kids where they have the foil in there and stuff like that. Yeah, I've been uh, seeing the foil. That that's really common in Denver. Really? Yeah. And I was know, just out there and they they all have foil. And you know something, my friend, the aluminum foil when you smoke that gets into your lungs and causes cancer. You know, quick and fast. So. Do you have any addictions? Yeah, I do have addiction. What? Masturbating. No, I'm just joking. joking. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> My addiction is is, is 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 loving and caring for the people. You know. Any you know, substance? 
Any substance abuse? No, I'm not addicted to nothing like that. You know. Yeah, I mean that's that's rare to hear on like Skid Skid Row, you know, because everyone has the, like, oh, I like to smoke crack, I like to do math, but um, um, the black one put me back. The other one is like, um, even yeah, Mango gets gifts. Folks, let me tell you. See, folks, we uh. I think good shape never been worn in, but it's just got a little bit of dirt on it. Oh, that's awesome, Sonia. This is awesome, baby. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a one time, I'm a rock star. Yeah, oh, there we go. He's got him some gifts. Not nigga, baby. I'm a rock star. You know, uh, this is what make mango, mango. But people like Sonia. To come around and to bless me with some hands, you know? Um, yeah. I don't worry about anything, my friend, because... It's been a while. Anyway, I'm pretty sure you guys are bored. Um, when, Mango, when are we going to go uh, take a tour of the estate? Um, we can go take a tour of the estate here. Now, if you choose to. All right, we're going to try and go over to Mango's uh, estate in a bit. Um, there's been... This is a long-ass interview. Uh, but we'll go see what's going on, see what he's doing to help house some of the people. Um, he helps do transitional housing for guys who's getting apartments and everything, trying to teach them some skills before they move in so they don't go in and just blow the opportunity they were given. So, Jesus, my hair looks terrible today. But, eh, whatever. Anyway. However, it's crucial to remember that not everything is perfect. Certain aspects of Mango's life mirror the Skid Row experience, and covering a story that wasn't immediately apparent in our initial conversations. Maybe I didn't ask the right questions earlier, or perhaps the trust wasn't just there yet, but... So, Mango, you, you smoke. What, cigarettes? Smoke, uh, I smoke marijuana, I smoke cigarettes, I smoke crystal. Uh, I smoke cigarettes like once, twice a week, you know what I mean? So, you, uh, where, are you, where are you gonna smoke now? Uh, well, I have this little cubby hole here, and uh, you know my friend Sonia, she stopped by, and uh, this is the the crystal, yeah. oh, this no. is the crystal well, spot. Well, crystal this, this is this is a, a, a to-go tank. See, okay, I've been here since this morning. I put in no lie, probably about at six thirty. It would be twelve hours right here at this one spot right here on Saint Julian at the Mission. And you move all over, L.A. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They. They bring, the, they bring the garbage dumpsters out in the morning time, and then those garbage dumpsters, they have recycled. People come out here and they get it all trashed up. And they go, Mango, I got them. And I started cleaning up. I started cleaning up behind the people, you know. And then those things, I, I get, you know, I get things like this. I call it de-diving. You know, that's one of the series that we're going we're gonna to be coming up with, is de-diving, is because you got to go out there and find your treasure. Yeah. Um, I found this, that would, be, that would go to a nice little kid, you know. Uh, and I found poo. I don't know where poo is at. You have Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, I have mm. Winnie the Pooh. Oh, Winnie okay, so Son, up. you're covering up because she's smoking her crystal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, so why did he smoke crystal? Well, when I was a kid, I used to do, uh, I used to take Ritalin. It gets me, you know, I'm a very hyper kid. You know? Yeah, AUC nuts. Um, no. Yes, and um, crystal kind of, kind of balanced me. You yeah. Know? Um, are, are you on crystal already? Uh, I, I did hit like an hour and a half ago before you guys came. I mean, I, I'll, I'll do hit, drop it, because it gets me, you know. Going, it me, yeah. yeah. It gets me going. And, um. Energizer bunny. Right, 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 <laughs> right. And it's not like. I mean, You're not, not like talking that. to yourself and all that stuff. No, 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 no. I know she's crazy shit like that. I don't see no ghosts, no visions, yeah. anything like that, you know. Uh, if I do, I'm like, whoa, hold on, man. You know, I will stop that. I will stop <laughs> using that shit then, you know. Yeah. Um. So would you say that you do this because you're trying to be a part of the people more? Or? Well, um, I will have to be a part of the people because to let them know I'm comfortable with them. Huh? You know, I, I, I do Chris because I get bored. You know, I, I would get bored. And I'm like, I do Chris and it, it just gets me motivated. It gets me up, you know. You know, it makes me, it balanced me, I would say. You know, when I was a kid, I was on Ritalin, you know. So Ritalin is the same thing. Ritalin is the... Uh, the, the, it's, it's legal uh, crystal. Yeah. So, um, so the same thing is I've been taking crystal for a long, long time. 52 years old. I was out taking crystal since I was seven, eight. You, uh, crystal meaning Ritalin. Um, yes, yes. So, uh, you just use it. Yeah. It's not for everyone. 
crystal is not for everyone. And please, folks, please, don't try that at home. Don't try it at home like that, folks. Well, I guess you would try it at home before trying anything else. But, but however, you know, just be be conscious of what the things. Be mindful of the drugs that you're using. I'm not suggesting that you use crystal. Uh, you know, um, but you know, just just like I say, it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. So you're not um, you're not afraid of it being uh, crystal and scent. Well, it is crystal and scent. You don't get it from everyone, and you accept it from the people that you you always deal with. You don't smoke behind everyone because if they want to target you, they'll target you. Yeah. You know, slip you something in your little bowl or things like that, and you're out. You know, thank God that he has me protected as that as that form like that. You know, uh, so I, I I just when I do my I have my own. Come out into the world. It's not like, whoa, man, you use drugs, you can't be the mayor. That's bullshit. Yeah. Because the mayor is doing, the mayor's <laughs> not, not Miss Bass, no. But well, remember, we don't know. I mean, shit, she could. She could be. Oh, we can shout out Miss Bass. But, you know, <laughs> um, um, that, that, that's, that's something that, uh, you know, that you do. And uh, if we see Miss Bass in the next couple of months out here walking down the street butt naked talking to herself, Miss Bass, you don't you own some some, shit. You own something, you know? Yeah. Uh, but we, I, don't, I don't believe we would see her out here. Do you think it's hypocritical for you to do that? And, like, you know, based on some of your views about trying to get people uh, reha rehabilitated or um, re-educated, you don't think it's contra not controversial, contradicting? No, because if I feel it's a problem for me, I want somebody to tell me, hey, man, it's a problem for you. And if I see it, it's going to be a problem for me. And it's getting in the way of my life or my things like that. Sure, I'm gonna go to rehab. No, yeah. I'm gonna go to rehab. Rehab is for quitters. So, so you can quit anytime. Would you say? Yes. Uh, so, so uh, contradicting. I'm not out here telling about you should. No, 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 no. Hey, you do. You want to do? We, I'm just here. I'm gonna be on your team and help you out if you need my assistance or help for anything. You know? Yeah. Like in your a ball. No, I'm straight. Just. <laughs> So, uh, but no, that, that, that's my view on it, man. That's my view on it like that, you know? I see. Now that we've peeled back a layer of Mango's story, it's time to venture deeper into his world. Let's take a closer look at the mayor's palace, where he resides at his quote-unquote $10 million compound. Within his domain and community, we're about to uncover a genuine glimpse into the reality of Mango's everyday life. And remember, this is just the beginning. Stay tuned for part two, releasing very shortly, where we'll dive even deeper into the untold stories and secrets of Mango's life. Thanks for watching.